The thing that happens to a lot of people when they finally decide to get serious about learning how to run their carry gun like their life actually depends on it is they get a kind of training paralysis. There are so many different skills to practice, they don't really know which ones to work on. Should I work on reloads or long distance precision shots or clearing malfunctions? It can be a little overwhelming. Some people just give up on any kind of serious practice altogether. And they never really get past a very basic level of proficiency with their handgun. Part of the issue is just a lack of focus and it's also a matter of just overcomplicating things. There are a lot of different skills we can work on, but we need to prioritize them. For self-defense, we want to think of this in terms of which skills we're most likely to need. What's going to help us actually stay alive? And when you think about it that way, the one thing you know you're going to have to do if your life is threatened and you actually need your gun is draw the gun. Whether you don't fire any shots or you end up shooting three attackers 25 yards away in the dark, either way, you're going to have to get the gun out of the holster. Now, it's good to practice all that other stuff, but for self-defense, a fast, efficient, and safe draw stroke should be pretty close to the top of the list of the hard skills that you can actually go to the range and practice. And really, you can dry practice this at home with an empty gun, or you can even use a dummy gun like this one to get the mechanics down. I like to think of the draw stroke as four different steps, and it looks something like this. One, two, three, Four. To break that down, the first step, I'm doing three things at once. I'm grabbing my cover garment and getting that out of the way with my support hand, but I'm also bringing the support hand up to my sternum to the center line. At the same time, my strong hand is going straight to the gun so the hands move at the same time, and I want a full firing grip on the gun. That means the, my hand is in the same position it's gonna be when I'm at full extension. I don't want to have kind of a half-hearted grip that I'm going to have to adjust when I get up here. That's a good way to fumble the gun. I also want to be able to fire from right here if I need to. So right out of the holster, I want a full firing grip. My cover garment, I'm aggressively pulling it out of the way. I don't want to just kind of half-heartedly do that and get, get the gun stuck with the rear sight. That's uh, bound to happen if you don't just pull this thing out of the way. And that goes for wherever you're carrying on the belt, whether it's at 3 o'clock or back here behind the hip. You want to grab and just aggressively pull up toward the center line before you uh, try to clear the gun out of the way. Now, if I've got an open front garment like a vest or a jacket or something like that, I'm going to use my strong hand to sweep that out of the way. And the support hand is just going to go here to the chest and rest there until I get to the next step. So step one, center line with the support hand, full firing grip with the strong hand. Step two, I'm going to drop my strong side elbow and bring the gun up to outside of my pec. Now I've got my thumb kind of flagged out like this so I can sort of drag it along my body as it comes up. That gives me kind of a physical anchor to my body so I know where the gun is at all times. It's not just kind of floating out here in space. I want it up next to me again so I can fire from here if I need to but also just so I know I'm doing it the same way every time. I want to come up and out every time. So that's up, step two, and I'm also letting go with my uh, support hand, letting go of the cover garment. Step three, I'm bringing the hands together right underneath my dominant eye so that I'm ready to see the sights when I need to. I'm just bringing the hands together, wrapping the support hand around the strong hand. Step four, pressing out to full extension. At the same time I'm pressing out, I'm getting my eyes on that front sight. I'm focusing on the front sight and tracking it until it rests in between the rear sight. And I'm moving my finger to the trigger and starting to take the slack out. So ideally, I've got the slack out and as soon as the front sight is where it needs to be and I've got a good sight picture, I can fire. So that's something you might have to work up to, but ideally, that's all happening at once during the draw stroke. To reholster back in, finger off the trigger and it's going to go back in that upside down L shape, in and back in the holster. You want to make sure you do this the same way every time, up and out, in and down. The way we build speed is with efficiency and consistency, doing this the same way every time and making sure we don't have any wasted movement. We don't want to like rock over and, and kind of shift our weight or do any kind of scooping motion with the gun. No wasted movement, up, out, in, down, same way every time. And that way you can start to build speed. 
Speed doesn't come from just trying to do it as fast as you can. It shouldn't feel rushed when you're, when you're doing it faster. It should feel natural just because you've done so many repetitions of it that you almost can't do it the wrong way. You're just doing it the same way you've done it always, just a little bit faster. So that's the four step draw stroke. There are different ways of breaking this down, but I've got to give a lot of credit for this version to the firearms instructor, Tom Givens. You can sign up for one of his classes at his website, rangemaster.com, or pick up his excellent book, Fighting Smarter. Until next time, you can subscribe to our channel, check out our blog, and be sure to buy copious amounts of ammo from luckygunner.com.